So friends, in this lecture, let us talk about sociological methods. There can be two ways of discussing method again. One that I tell you that these are the steps of research one, two, three, four. As in standard textbooks, these things have been defined. Gisbert says problem, hypothesis, data, verification. Or I try to relate methods to theories, perspectives. Now, normally when a sociological problem is studied, let me take up the same problem, education. You will come across several types of researches on education, several types. In any research, first and foremost issue is asking interesting research questions. Whether it is sociology or it is aerodynamics or physics, the results of your research are not as important as the questions that you raise in research. All great researches have come into being because some interesting questions were asked. So your research depends on your problem. How do you define a research problem? A statement of the problem. The principles of methods are universal. Sociology or electronics or physics, they are, they are everywhere same. Problem. The kind of research that we have on education, several types of problems have been studied. One problem may be like, what is the literacy rate of India? And then the second question, socio-economic and regional differences. You may also ask questions on dropout and relationship with relationship of dropout rates, dropout rate with gender, socio-economic condition, and region. What are dropout rates? What proportion or percentage of children drop out, stop going to school at primary level, secondary level, at the level of graduation, post-graduation. And what is the relationship between dropout rate with, uh, what is the relationship between dropout rate and gender? We know that in our country, dropout rate among girls are higher than among boys. Socioeconomic conditions. Socioeconomic conditions may mean urban rural areas, caste, community, economic level, education of parents, and so on. Region, state-wise differences, district-wise differences, block-wise differences, village-wise differences, differences according to households. 
this is one type of research just factual government of india is interested in this research and if you read the chapter on education in the last 11th five year plan it's full of statistics on these questions that the level of literacy in india is this school enrollment rates are these what proportion of children school enrollment rate what proportion of children are enrolled in schools then certain measurements of this what what are more appropriate measurements more refined measurements when you calculate rates and ratios by what factor you will divide number of children going to school means children in which age group or how accordingly there will be several measurements gross enrollment ratio net enrollment ratio rates etc etc where you have to define number of children going to standards 1 to 5 divided by children of that age group in which we expect children to be in school between 1 and 5 so there are ways of the issue of measurement will come and you can see in the chapter on education uh, what are as school enrollment rates at the primary level at the secondary level at the tertiary level you can find out what proportion of children stops going to schools and colleges at various levels then the uh, 11th five year plan talks about relationship male female gross enrollment rate male female dropout rates males females socio economic and now in terms of socio economic categories inclusive we talk of inclusive growth inclusive means we have to define what we mean by inclusive growth and then the five year plan defines that inclusive growth is one in which differences between schedule caste schedule tribes obcs and others are eliminated or mitigated and differences between certain states which are backward northeast jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh hilly regions and others are removed and differences between backward states like up bihar madhya pradesh rajasthan and more advanced states like haryana punjab gujarat maharashtra andhra are also removed so this is for making your five year plan you will need data of this kind and then the five year plan government will also evolve strategies to achieve their goals goals of in inclusive economic inclusive economic growth inclusive education in which people from all castes and categories now you see the problem with this kind of approach is this is good and all managers all governments will need this kind of data china a communist country also collect these kinds of data india a socialist country also collect these data united states a market economy also collect these data. these data are important but these data also hide many things and you can raise questions about quality of data operationalization of concepts for example 
you know, from managerial perspective or from functionalist perspective, if you say that in general category, now there is no general, there is other. SC, ST, OBC and others. There is no general category. So now if, if uh, the day government is able to show that if among others, a school enrollment rate at the secondary level is S, it is S, S, S everywhere. And if percentage in class 1 jobs, according to others, SC, ST, OBC is also same. That if of all the jobs, if you can say percentage in the overall population. If the percentage in the overall population are P1, P2, P3 and P4. From population census you can calculate what is the percentage of people in others, SCs, STs and OBCs. And government is able to show in five year plan, in the chapter on education, in the chapter on employment, etc, etc, that class 1 jobs, P1, P2, P3, P4, the percentage of people in class 1 jobs according to caste is also same. So if, like, uh, if P2 is 16% of India's population, and you can show that 16% of those in class 1 jobs are SC. Then Ram Raji has come. This is what the government approach means. Okay? Any managerial approach, government approach would be like this. It makes sense, yeah? it makes sense. This is the meaning of inclusive growth. Inclusive growth means class 1 jobs, class 2 jobs, class 3 jobs, class 4 jobs. Percentages of those in jobs according to caste are same as their percentages in the overall population. Similar the situation with respect to education. If you find that dropout rate before going to uh, say secondary level as one percent of girls in other category drop out if s1 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 in all the category then the goal of inclusive development is achieved this is so this is the problem and this is the method, census, every 10 year we conduct census for a specialized status, these, uh, these data dropout can come from specially conducted surveys, these can come from secondary data, administrative record. administrative record surveys national and sub national and to conduct a survey uh, you need a questionnaire there are techniques to develop a questionnaire so that the wordings, orders of question become objective, free from any kind of investigator or researcher bias. And 
researchers in different fields have already evolved techniques which will produce as objective data as possible. So population census that is also a kind of secondary data. If you broadly divide data into two parts, primary and secondary, then primary data refer to those data which are collected by the researchers themselves. If you conduct a survey, if you do your own field work, you go to a community, spend one year, two years there, mix with the people, see the condition over there, talk to various kinds of people, and also observe their behavior in diverse settings. You have primary data. And data which are already documented, sensor data, administrative records, you can get lots of data. Suppose you want to work on crime, then you can find lot of data on crime in India from police, already existing police records. You go to Google search and Google will send you to appropriate site from where you can get lot of data on crime, domestic violence, sexual harassment, legal disputes, health, fertility, lots of data are available. From administrative records, from censuses, and uh, from other sources that researchers have already collected a lot of data on something, so they become your secondary data. This is one kind of research. Now, in another kind of research or from critical perspective, you may ask questions regarding validity of this whole approach. By following this kind of approach, can India really become a developed country and can we really have an inclusive growth? Suppose we are able to achieve all these things. Suppose we are able to achieve dropout rates of S1 in all the categories, dropout rates among girls before secondary. And suppose we are able to achieve that in class 1 positions, all the castes and communities of India are adequately represented. Can we say that we, are, we have gone in the right direction and there is no problem? Suppose the whole effort to move in this direction at a time when one day I mentioned that only 8% of Indians are in regular jobs in the formal sector. But for ensuring this kind of inclusive growth in 8% people, you have created so much of rift, hatred, distance among ordinary people of India. What I can say, Africanization of India or tribalization of India or casteization of India. Will it be good? I can understand that if 100% Indians are in class 1 jobs. And among those 100% Indians who are in class, that all Indians, all, uh, that, will not, that will not happen ever. That all Indians are, uh, are IAS officers. That all Indians are DMs. And in all the DMs, all castes and communities are equally represented. Okay, then there is no problem. But, if uh, this whole issue is to adequately represent India in the 8% and you are going to achieve this at the cost of creating Balkanization of India, Africanization of India, division and creating more hostility on the basis of caste and community and region and language and culture, I think uh, this is not uh, desirable. If 92% people, and 
the 92 percent people not a small percentage actually if somehow this uh, whole process can be reversed and in 92 percent India all caste and communities 92 percent Indians are in secure jobs in formal sector and among them all caste and communities are equally represented then uh, then also I can understand but in a country in which at all I don't know whether this 8 will become 9 in 12 5 year plan some indications are that this 8 may reduce to 7 so in a country in which this 8 cannot be raised to 92 if you are ensuring this kind of inclusive growth by creating a climate in which there is more distrust, disintegration, anomaly, casteism, communalism in the larger society, whether it will do good to society or is this the kind of social order in which we want to move? Somebody can ask that question. Research depends on question. So on education you can ask the question, what are it? Routine, governments will be interested in routine type of research. From socialist perspective, your issue would be from Marxist perspective. class and educational achievement if you do any research on educational achievements at least try to relate that to class Marxists will be more interested in this a Marxist or socialist kind of researcher would not be interested in caste or religion or Andhra Pradesh or Kerala or Tamil Nadu, class and education. From Marxist perspective, if you think that education is providing legitimacy to the dominant class or is uh, serving the ideological function, you may also be interested in uh, class, education and ideology, A study of ideology, what has education done to ideology of people, belief systems, ideology, beliefs, and the Marxist will show that the main purpose of education has not been to prepare people for role allocation, but for legitimation of the dominant classes. So then uh, it also means education, somebody can make a study of education and occupation what kind of job is one doing with what education what kind of job is one doing was it necessary that those who are in occupation o required education e? what is the kind of relationship between education and occupation you can do surveys you can again do field work ethnographic work in sociology, there is not much scope for experimental research. But some kind of computer simulation modeling can be done. It has been done. Experiments are rare. Only in some very rare cases, experiments are done. Otherwise, experiments cannot be allowed on ethical grounds. You may want to study what will be the impact of education on per capita income. 
experimental research will mean that you select a control group an experimental group in the experimental group you promote education in the control group you do nothing and then see after 10 years 15 years what are the differences in per capita income of experimental and control group this is what what is meant by experiment laboratory experiments in medical sciences laboratory experiments of this kind or clinical studies of this kind control experimental are very common you want to see whether a drug works in case of blood pressure so you select a, randomly select a group of persons suffering from blood pressure and randomly distribute them to uh, them into two groups control and experimental and in the experimental group you administer the drug in the control group you give something which does not contain any drug the bottle or the pills or the wrapper may look very similar to what is being given in the experimental group but actually it is placebo it does not contain any drug and after some time a few months or after a few years you check whether there is still a difference in blood pressure of the two groups if you find that in the experimental group where a particular drug was given blood pressure has become normal or the average decline in blood pressure is more then you can attribute that to the drug in sociology there are very rare occasions to conduct experiments because no, uh, nobody will permit you to select a group a control group where advantages of education are withdrawn in experimental group you say that we will do everything we will, we will promote education by all possible means and to the highest degree and all kinds of education technical professional arts liberal arts music in the other group we will not do anything it's unethical and it will be unacceptable not to do anything in the control group so experimental method in sociology is rare only in some very rare cases experiments have been conducted because you want to give in sociology in society we want to give benefit of all developments to everyone so experimental method rare issues are while from managerial perspective the focus will be more on managerial categories yeah? achievements differences according to socio economic or caste or community category regional categories marxist will relate this more to education more education to class class is central to any study of education so we will look at what is education among the proletariats what is education among the members of labor class is education among the members of labor class means the same thing which education means among the members of the capitalist class or the meaning of education itself is different so somebody somebody can take a symbolic interaction is the is the meaning of education for a child belonging to the laboring class same as the meaning of education for a child belonging to the capitalist class what is education and meanings are based on experiences so do the children belonging to the laboring classes will develop the uh, the same images of education same ideas of education same meaning of education which the children belonging to upper classes or the dominant classes going to develop 
for children belonging to upper classes or the dominant classes, for children going to elite class, KG schools, nurseries, public schools, and elite institutions, education means something else, more human, right from the beginning, more playful, more meaningful, more entertaining, uh, and teachers are more motivating, and they see that with education so much can be done, or many people with education have achieved so much. Education is purposeful, meaningful, and the conditions in which education is uh, imparted is also conducive to education. But I think most of you have come with that kind of background. Not all, but most of you have come from that kind of background. Upper, slightly upper class or upper middle class background, going to good quality private schools, nurseries, cages, good schools, then public schools, Delhi Public School or uh, others, and then IIT Kanpur. And you have one understanding of education. Are the children belonging to the labor class likely to develop the same meaning of education which you people have? When they go to a government school, where teachers are highly demotivating, they do not come to class, the school is always logged, or when they come to class, they do not teach anything, they are not interested in teaching, they beat children, give physical punishment, cannot enthuse students to take up educational studies, and the student does not find any meaning in education at all. He finds or she finds playing with friends or doing farm activities or engaging in laboring activities itself. Thoda bahut koi labor kar lenge, do char rupay kama lenge, paan masala kha lenge. Usme jitna maja aata hai, utna school jane mein nahi aata. You know, upper class, when children from upper classes go to nursery and KG schools, there are toys, there are AC rooms, well-dressed teachers, very motivating atmosphere, other children also coming from upper classes, you are interacting with them. When you meet their parents, they are also very polite and encouraging. The atmosphere is very different. It's, uh, it's much more fulfilling for majority of cases. And the school, government school, where child of a labor on, on the campus we have, yeah, campus is a good example in IIT Kanpur. You have various types of schools. You have campus school, you have central school, you have schools in the neighborhood run by NGOs like our uh, Jagriti and Shiksha Sopan. There are primary schools of various types. Do you think that the experiences of children going to second or third standard in Jagriti school, in Shiksha Sopan schools, in campus school, in uh, central school, and in uh, DPS in Kalyanpur will be same? They will develop the same idea of that this is what education means. And whether education is good or bad, useful or not so useful, whether this education will attract them or attract their mind, will make them creative or not, will make them a useful citizen of the country or not, will be conducive to further development of the child or not, will uh, make a, uh, a good personality. There is a whole range of schools. Uh, leftist and critical kind of sociologists will look more of uh, on uh, more on these types of questions. So, on the one hand, you have opportunity schools. Since you have not experienced these things, 
maybe uh, it's difficult for you to comprehend, but you can also imagine that on the one extreme you have opportunity school. A school where children of domestic servants go. Opportunity school run by donations from faculty and staff and where children belonging to domestic servants uh, living in outhouses of type 4, type 5 houses go. Then Shiksha Sopan, then Jagriti, then campus school, then central school, and DPS. Will you say that education, the meaning of education for children going to all these schools is same? Or the experiences of education for all these children will be same? Some sociologists will ask this question. There are some sociologists who are happy with literacy rates, dropout rates, dropout rate and schedule car, dropout rate and regions, dropout rate and communities. And government needs this kind of data. Majority of sociologists will do this. But there will be some other sociologists also. Marxists, those who use Marxist paradigm, symbolic interest. This is a question of symbolic interest. This, is, uh, this meaning of education, meaning of education for children going to different types of school, opportunity school, Siksha Sopan, Jagriti campus, Siksha Sopan has more of uh, RSS type of color and Jagriti more of leftist kind of color, campus run by IIT Kanpur, central school, part of central school education and Delhi public school. So somebody can explore what is the meaning of education for children going to different types of schools. That is the question of symbolic interactionism. Will education in these different settings develop same kind of uh, self or different kinds of selves among children? Self. Social interaction in all these contexts will develop some kind of image of self. When uh, self image, when uh, children will start uh, looking at themselves from the perspectives of others, play stage and game stage. Symbolic interaction is Harvard, uh, George Harvard Mead and Harvard Bloomer. I mentioned two names and they will talk of say play stage and game stage. Yesterday I was talking to one child. Um, my neighbor's wife was taking her child. So we stopped, kaise hai, kya hai? A very small. A few months old. And I started interacting with the child. And I was applying my symbolic interaction. <laughs> I started making various types of noises, made different types of gestures, and the child was happy. That is the play stage. At that stage, child can only separate himself from others. Symbolic interaction is say that in play stage, when children are playing with doctor, 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 or something. They can see that they are separate from others. This child was not even at that stage when he can separate himself from others. So when I was making gestures, he was receiving some inputs, that's all. I was making some sounds, some gestures, and child was receiving some inputs. So after a few minutes, he, that child started smiling, looked very happy, cheerful. That is one stage. Gradually, this child will develop. And the child will start understanding that he is different from other human beings. 
and then a stage will come when he learns the rules of the game. Now you see what will happen to children going there. Children will go to schools in different contexts, different types of schools, government, private, develop different self-images, different understandings of people. You think that uh, at, in the beginning they are all biological beings, all children are all children are like the child of my neighbor, biological beings. They receive some stimuli and they smile or they cry. That child, when child was smiling, that child, I was telling myself that this child does not have any understanding of social identity. He is not bothered whether he is interacting with high caste or low caste or educated or uneducated or male or female or professor or laborer, at that stage, the child receives inputs and behaves in a certain way. Gradually, this child will grow up and child will start typifying or classifying different occupations and people, mother, father, laborer, teacher, neighbor, uncle, aunt, classification starts. And in the third stage, then the child will be able to place himself in the positions of all those others and understand what are the kinds of relationships governing them. Now see, among children, whether a child going to opportunity school and a child going to DPS, when they come to game stage and they start developing understanding of this world and their self-image, Will they develop the same self-image in the two settings? Will their attitude towards the world, will their attitude towards society, towards other human beings, men and women, educated, uneducated, their attitude towards money, their attitude towards employment, nationalism, will be same? Somebody has to ask, some sociologists have to ask these kinds of questions. Educa some sociologists will assume that education is good and they will create statistics of educational achievements. Some sociologists will ask whether this is really true, that education leads to social mobility, whether there is any social inequality in education whether class and education are related. Sociologists who is collecting data on school achievements or on literacy, education dropout, seems to be working more in the functional perspective. And a sociologist asking questions about educational inequalities, do we have educational inequalities, is our education system unequal? Is our education system treating people belonging to different classes unequally? Is there any relationship between class and education? And if not, then why education? What is education doing to ideology, to belief systems? Marxist sociologists will ask these types of questions. Now, symbolic interaction is, will ask, is Questions about the meanings, self, meaning of education, self. They will also be interested in uh, what kind of, how different kinds of labels get attached to children coming from different communities. In a government school, teachers start labeling. good student, bad student, and quite often on basis which have nothing to do with education. Even in the narrow sense, if education means acquiring information in one specific domain, say physics, acquiring education in the domain of physics, suppose this is the meaning of education. But what happens that teachers, first classify students according to 
mannerisms, dress, language, facial expressions. So my student was telling that in Jammu, where she is doing the field work, that in the same school, same government school, children who come from classes which are relatively better off and can speak in English, not very fluently, but can speak some words of English. Teachers think that they are great students, they are all going to be Einstein. Actually, good speaking in English may have nothing to do with knowledge of alphabets or rhymes or uh, history or story or... Uh, but due to cultural capital, because some people come from good cultural capital, so uh, labels are attached. There is no relationship between uh, language which is spoken in the family and your ability to acquire information in physics. There is no correlation. Hindi-speaking children can acquire as much information in physics as English-speaking, provided you speak to them or provide the material in their language. But unfortunately, what happens, on the basis of language, language is the basis, and on the basis of language, they develop the label of good student or bad student. It's a language is a serious and very complex question, and this affects you lifelong. Uh, only primary school teachers are not the only one who are at fault. This affects us lifelong. And as a result of that good bad student kind of level, their knowledge of number system suffers. In some cases, knowledge of number system will suffer. There is no connection between knowledge of number system and language. But symbolic interactionists will say that if you are fair looking, if you are tall and you are well dressed and you can produce some words in English and you have some etiquettes and manners associated with upper class, then you are a good student. If you are short, vitis, if you cannot utter some words of English and you come shabbily dressed, then you are a bad student. And you are not fit for studies. You are a bad student, you are not fit for studies. And once these labels are attached to children, unfortunately, these become the master labels and the children themselves start behaving in a manner consistent with the labels attached to them by their teachers. Symboli symbolic interactionists are more worried about that aspect. Symbolic interactionists, this second, you know, it's, it's equivalent to secondary deviance, the result of labels. What happens to a child to whom a label of being a bad student is attached? Bekar ke They will never understand anything. Bekar ke loge. Pada nahi maa baap inko kyo bhej dete hai school. Inhe kaam pe jaayen abhi se baise bhi padhke kuch hona nahi hai. Kya kar lenge paanchwa paas karke, daswa paas karke. Inke maa baap ko chahiye ki abhi se inko kisi kaam me lagaayen, do paise kamaayenge. So teachers send these kinds of signals to students coming from certain communities, which affect their self-image. Because self-image is all based on others' reactions towards us. And symbolic interactionists will say that these kinds of self-images will be harmful to uh, acquire higher education for children belonging to certain communities. 
I was thinking that when I discuss methods, I will tell you the exact procedures which are followed in empirical statistical research. But I thought that in this in this class of introductory sociology, sensitizing students to perspectives is more important than giving them techniques. That's why I try to relate the issue of education. So, and the story does not end here. There are like families, there are other perspectives, family's perspective. According to family's perspective, it's not class, it's not community, it's nothing other than the gender, which is at the root of problems of women worldwide. Nothing helps women. Everywhere, in capitalist countries, in socialist countries, in agriculture, in industry, in rural and urban areas, low class or high class, everywhere women suffer. So families will say that the real conflict in society is the conflict between men and women. And they will try to relate everything, everything to conflict between men and women. Patriarchy. For them, the root cause of all kinds of problems is patriarchy. And in a, uh, because women occupy a lower position on the social structure, so no wonder that all indicators of development education, income, wages, health, self-esteem, personality, you know, show women in poor light. In all respects, women suffer. So like that, there are perspectives. One can also look at the same issues from Dalit perspective. One, one can look at the same issues from, say, Islamic perspective. One can look at the same issues from rural perspective. There are all kinds of sociologies, emphasizing class, first functional perspective, emphasizing society, then Marxist perspective of class, symbolic interaction, micro self-images, how self-images affect behavior, then feminist perspective, Dalit perspective in our country, communal perspectives. You can look at the same thing from communal perspective. You can look at the same thing from on the problem of education from, say, Muslim perspective, Islamic perspective. Is this education desirable? Is secular education desirable? Or is madrasa education to be preferred over secular education? Why in this country there is a kind of disadvantage or discrimination against Muslims? when it comes to seats in educational institutions, you can look at the same issues from Islamic or Muslim perspective. So, and I stop here by saying that the answers that your research offers is not so important. The questions that you ask in your research are more important.